Macmillan Audio presents The Assassination of Margaret Thatcher Stories by Hilary Mantel Read for you by Jane Carr Sorry to Disturb In those days, the doorbell didn't ring often, and if it did, I would draw back into the body of the house. Only at a persistent ring would I creep over the carpets and make my way to the front door with its spy hole. We were big on bolts and shutters, deadlocks and mortises, safety chains and windows that were high and barred. Through the spy hole, I saw a distraught man in a crumpled silver-gray suit, thirties, Asian. He had dropped back from the door and was looking about him at the closed and locked door opposite and up the dusty marble stairs. He patted his pockets, took out a balled-up handkerchief, and rubbed it across his face. He looked so fraught that his sweat could have been tears. I opened the door. At once he raised his hands, as if to show he was unarmed, his handkerchief dropping like a white flag. Madam, ghastly pale I must have looked under the light that dappled the tiled walls with swinging shadows. But then he took a breath, tugged at his creased jacket, ran a hand through his hair, and conjured up his business card. Mohammed Ijaz, import-export, I am so sorry to disturb your afternoon. I am totally lost. Would you permit use of your telephone? I stood aside to let him in. No doubt I smiled. Given what would ensue, I must suppose I did. Of course, if it's working today. I walked ahead and he followed, talking. An important deal. He had almost closed it. Visit to client in person necessary. Time. He worked up his sleeve and consulted a fake Rolex. Time running out. He had the address. Again, he patted his pockets. But the office is not where it should be. He spoke into the telephone in rapid Arabic, fluent, aggressive, his eyebrows shooting up. Finally, shaking his head, he put down the receiver, looked at it in regret, then up at me with a sour smile. Weak mouth, I thought. Almost a handsome man, but not. Slim, sallow, easily thrown. I am in your debt, madam, he said. Now I must dash. I wanted to offer him a what? Bathroom break? Comfort stop? I had no idea how to phrase it. The absurd phrase, wash and brush up, came into my mind. But he was already heading for the door. Though from the way the call had concluded, I thought that they might not be so keen to see him at his destination as he was to see them. This crazy city, he said. They are always digging up the streets and moving them. I am so sorry to break in on your privacy. In the hall, he darted another glance around and up the stairs. Only the British will ever help you. He skidded across the hall and prized open the outer door with its heavy ironwork screen, admitting for a moment the dull roar of traffic from Medina Road. The door swung back. He was gone. I closed the hall door discreetly and melted into the oppressive hush. The air conditioner rattled away like an old relative with a loose cough. The air was heavy with insecticide. Sometimes I sprayed it as I walked and it fell about me like bright mists, veils. I resumed my phrase book and tape. Fifth lesson. I'm living in Jeddah. I'm busy today. God give you strength. When my husband came home in the afternoon, I told him a lost man was here, Pakistani businessman. I let him in to phone. My husband was silent. The air conditioner hacked away. He walked into the shower, having evicted the cockroaches, walked out again, dripping, naked, lay on the bed, stared at the ceiling. Next day, I swept the business card into a bin. In the afternoon, the doorbell rang again. Ijaz had come back to apologize, to explain, to thank me for rescuing him. I made him some instant coffee, and he sat down and told me about himself. It was then June 1983. I had been in Saudi Arabia for six months. My...
Sample complete. Ready to continue?